Here we have an example where the two masses collide in such a way that after the collision they will go in different directions. So you can see that mass 1 and mass 2, notice they have the same mass. I wanted to make it a little bit simpler the first time around, so even though we have two different masses, we can call this mass 1, and we call this mass 2. They do have the same mass, but after the collision, mass 1 will go up at an angle of 30 degrees above the horizontal, mass 2 will go down at an angle of 45 degrees below the horizontal. What will be their final velocities? So how do we solve a problem like that? Well, it turns out with conservation momentum, momentum is conserved in any dimension, in any direction. So we can say that the, cons that the momentum is conserved in the x direction, and momentum is also conserved in the y direction. And because of that, we're going to end up with two equations. We need two equations because we'll have two unknowns, v1 final and v2 final. So in order to find out what they are for both, we need two equations. So the way we can come up with that is to say that momentum initial in the x direction will equal momentum final in the x direction. And likewise, we can say that momentum initial in the y direction equals momentum final in the y direction. So that's how we're going to end up with our two equations. Now, before we do that, before we continue, let's take our final velocities and write their x and y components of those two y velocities because ultimately velocities are vector quantities and when we deal with two-dimensional problems like this, we do, need to, we do need to decompose our vectors, our v1 final and v2 final, into their x and y components. So let's do that and let me use a different color. Let's see if this is my good pen. So here we have v1 final in the x direction, which would be equal to v1 final times the cosine of theta 1 or 30 degrees. And then here we can see that this here would be v1 final in the y direction, which is equal to v1 final. And of course, that would be the same as the opposite to the angle that would be v1 final times the sine of 30 degrees. Okay, we can do the same for the second velocity. So here we can see, see that this is uh, v2 final in the x direction, which is equal to v2 final times the cosine of 45 degrees. And then this component here is v2 final in the y direction, which is equal to v2 final times the sine of 45 degrees. Now, let's not yet worry about the positive and negative signs because we do that later because these are simply the, com the components of the vectors. And of course, the magnitudes of vectors always have to be positive. It's just that their directions could be negative. And we'll deal with that when we write out the equations. All right, so now let's go ahead and sum up all the momentum in the x direction initially and all the momentum in the y direction after the collision and see what we get. So first of all, we'll have m1 v1 initial plus m2 v2 initial, even though we know that v2 had an initial velocity of zero. It was just sitting there. We know that this will go to zero. And so this equals, now, what are the x components of their final velocities? It would be m1 times v1 final in the x direction, and I'll just write it out like this, plus m2 v2 final in the x direction. So we only want to have the x components of their final velocities there. We do the same for the y direction, so we can say that m1 v1 final in the y direction, oop, I don't have to write it that high, should be a subscript, plus m2 v2 final in the y direction equals m1, and did I say final? No, I don't want to say final, that's the before the collision, so initial, initial, and that's m1 v1 final in the y direction plus m2 v2 final in the y direction. Sometimes with all the subscripts, it gets a little confusing. But what we do know is that before the collision, this object was standing still and this object was only moving in the x direction, which means there were no components in the y direction before the collision. So this goes to zero, this goes to zero, and might as well come over here and realize that the second mass wasn't moving, so this goes to zero as well. That simplifies things just a little. All right, now let's write in what these are equal to. So we have m1, we can just write m times v1 initial, which is 10, is equal to m1, which is m, times v1 final in the x direction, which is right there, v1 final times the cosine of 30 degrees, plus m2, which is also m, 
times v2 final in the x direction, which is v2 final times a cosine of 45 degrees. All right. So now you have the equation for the momentum, conservation momentum, in the x direction. We do the same for the y direction. So we have 0 is equal to m1, which is m, times v1 final in the y direction. That would be v1 final times the sine of 30 degrees plus m, because m2 is also equal to m, times v2 final times the sine of 45 degrees. So now here we have the equation where the momentum is conserved in the y direction. Now to make things simple, I did call, I did say that the masses are equal to each other, which means we can simply get rid of all the masses, divide both sides of the equation by m, so all the m's disappear. And we can do the same over here, divide both sides by m, and the m's disappear. And we can now also write in what the sine and cosine of uh, 45, or the, yeah, the cosine and the sine of 45 and 30 degrees are equal to, so we have 10 is equal to, the cosine of 30 is 0 0.866 times v1 final, plus the cosine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707 times v2 final. So now we have our simplified equation that relates v1 final and v2 final, of course, two unknowns, one equation, can't solve it yet, we need our second equation. So 0 equals the sine of 30 is 1 half, so 0 0.5 times v1 final, plus the sine of 45 degrees is 0 0.707 times v2 final. And here as well, we now have an equation with the two unknowns, and we can now solve those two equations simultaneously. Let's see, it's probably easier to solve for one of those variables and then plug it into this equation, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply both sides by 2 to turn this into a 1, so 0 equals v1 final plus 1.414 v2 final. So I simply multiply both sides by 2, and then I move the v2 final over to the left side, or just simply turn the equation around, I can write v1 final, therefore is equal to minus 1.414 v2 final. Ooh, ooh, I've got to be careful. I made one mistake, I need to go back here. Notice, when I deal with the v2 final in the y direction, that's pointing in the negative direction, and momentum is a vector quantity, so I want to make sure when I deal with the v2 final in the y direction that I call this a negative quantity. This should be 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 a negative quantity, which makes this into a positive quantity. Got to be careful here. Okay. So again, iterating what I just did, notice that this, is, this v1 final is in the positive y direction, this is in the negative y direction, so when I add up the momentum, this should be positive quantity because it's in the upward direction, this should be negative momentum because it's in the downward direction, so I need to have a negative sign there which I had to carry through all the way. All right. So, now that we have v1 final in terms of v2 final, I can go ahead and plug that into my equation right here. And that way I get rid of v1 final, only have an equation in terms of v2 final. So we have 10 equals 0 0.866 times, instead of v1 final, I write 1.414 v2 final plus 0 0.707 v2 final. Okay, now I do need a calculator. So, we have 0 0.866 times 1.414 plus 0 0.707 equals, that leaves me with 1.93, so 10 equals 1.93 v2 final, so therefore v2 final equals 10 divided by 1.93, which is equal to, so take the inverse of this, second function inverse, and then times 10 equals, and we end up with 5.18 meters per second. Okay, so that's how I find V2 final. So V2 is the final velocity of mass 2 in this direction, 45 degrees below horizontal. It will have a final velocity of 5.18 meters per second. And now we can also find V1 final because this is equal to 1.414 times what we found for V2 final, which is 5.18 meters per second, 
Yes, this is indeed an eight. There we go. Close parentheses. So times 1.414 equals, and that will have a final velocity of 7.32 meters per second. And there we go. So now we have V2 final over here and V1 final over there. And that's how we do that. So again, iterating, reiterating how we solve a problem like this. We have two equations. We look at, we have the conservation of momentum in the x direction. We have the conservation of momentum in the y direction. So we write the two equations down just like before, but making sure that the final velocity, we only take the components in the x direction. And here the final velocity, we only take the components in the y direction. Since there was no initial momentum in the y direction, of course, the left side of this equation will be zero. Here we did have an initial momentum in the x direction because this mass was moving in the positive x direction. After the collision, one mass goes in an angle this way, one mass goes in an angle this way. We make sure we find the corresponding x and y components of their final velocities, x and y components. At this stage, we don't yet worry about the negative signs, but then once you put it into an equation form, realizing that after the collision, the y component of the first mass is in the positive y direction, the y component of the second mass is in the negative y direction, so you have to have a negative sign there. And that's how we solve this problem.